Now before we get into texturing our objects, let's take a little break and talk about the way textures wrap around objects. And so you may have asked yourself in the past, how do these images get onto a globe? Like, do they print onto a sphere? Is there some printer that you can put a ball into and it will print images onto it? The answer is actually pretty easy. A globe, the images that are on a globe are actually printed flat. And they're printed in a way that they can be cut and wrapped around a sphere in order to create an image on a rounded object. So this is at the heart how we're going to have to think about textures in 3D as well. So let's talk about some other examples that may be familiar to you, such as wrapping paper. Many of you have had to wrap stuff for the holidays or for birthdays, and we understand that wrapping paper, even though it comes in tubes, is a flat sheet of paper. And the challenge is how do we wrap this flat sheet of paper around a 3D object like a box? So it's not that difficult to wrap a flat object around something rectangular or box shaped. There's a lot of straight edges and it folds pretty neatly. And although you have a little bit of excess, you can just kind of fold that up into the corners. However, rounded shapes become more complicated. So if we take something like a cylinder, Sometimes it's hard to know what to do with that excess paper. We just sort of crumple it up at the top and tie a bow around it. If you've ever had to wrap something really complicated like a ball, usually it's easier just to put it in a bag and twist a knot in the top. But what if it's something really, really complicated? How do we wrap a car? How do we wrap a human being? This is the challenge we have to face when we're trying to figure out how to get a 2D textured image to wrap around a 3D object. Some of you may have noticed in pieces of candy like this that even though this is a 3D shape, the image that is wrapped around it is really just a flat texture. This is a good example of how we're going to have to think about texturing inside of Maya. Another example is boxes. So for example, this candy box although makes up a 3D shape when folded like this, when we unfold it, we see that it was probably printed out as a flat sheet of paper and cut up and folded into that shape. And just to show you that I have other references other than candy references, it works the same with organic coffee cups, it folds out into a shape like this. Again, our 3D objects are going to work the same way. When we have a complicated model, such as this robot, we have to unwrap this mesh and lay it out flat. So this would be an example of how we could unfold all of those polygon objects and lay them out flat so they will line up more cleanly with a 2D texture. This flattened version of the object is called the UV map. We'll talk about this a little bit more when we get back into Maya, but the U and the V stand for additional axes that allow us to work outside of the original X, Y, and Z axes of 3D space. That means we can have both a flattened version of our model that lets us know how the textures will line up with it, as well as still having our 3D version of our model. This image can be mapped into the color channel of our material. And although it looks hard to understand right now, Maya can interpret that and put the texture on the right locations of our model. Interestingly, we can have other types of maps that line up with these UVs as well. So although this would control the color of the object, this map would control the way the light bounces off of the object. This is called a normal map. Or maybe this image might control what parts are reflective and what parts are not. As we've seen earlier, we can use these checkerboards along the edge to map different images into different attributes of our material in order to get a much more complex material.